Shut up and sit down. Welcome once again to the Shy Talk Paga Show, Mark and Ken. Back. What's up? 140th show of the yeah. podcast. Nearly at 280. Yeah, and only 10 away from 150, which would yeah. be halfway to 300. Yeah, we're nearly there. Nearly halfway to 300. So, yeah, yeah it's been a <laughs> wild ride so far on the podcast. <laughs> um, it's been several weeks since me and Ken actually have seen each other in person. We're just continuing to do it, obviously, over the phone. Yeah, it's uh, it's been mad. It's been mad, and yeah, it. Anything strange in your life? Mm, not really. No, it's just the same shit every day. Pretty much. Get up, go to work, come home. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's just like every day for the last three months has been a Sunday. Yeah, like I, I, I'm struggling to remember what day of the week it is. Oh, I'm not really struggling too badly. Like I, I feel I felt like I was the only person. In Ireland, that was excited about the bank holiday that just passed. No, because you get them off. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. I was like, "Oh my god, two days off in a row! This is what a luxury." <laughs> yeah, they, they, I I fully thought today was Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I had to keep remind myself. I was like, "I have a podcast tomorrow. I have a podcast tomorrow." I have to keep remind remind myself that it's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's mad. Yeah, I don't like it. Yes, but like I think things now we have a path to back to normality. Yeah. So the government has laid out a uh, a phased strategy in order to get the country back up and running. And every phase, we have to make sure that like the country, the coronavirus isn't increasing in its spread uh, before we move to the next phase. Uh, but like we have kind of dates and phases we have to go on so at least we know which phase we are until it's kind of normal yeah however the shy talk podcast show like it's, <laughs> we're kind of a, like an ideas podcast yeah we're, not, we're the ideas guys yeah, we're the ideas guys and like i have seen there the government solutions end are fine they're fine but i thought i'd, I'd try to try our hands at improving them in some way <laughs> I think our um, our idea of sticking Corona patients on Inishmore fell on deaf ears. Unfortunately, I thought it would have worked pretty well. I think that got rejected. Yeah, yeah. People just casually ignored us when we said that. But I thought like Inishmore people are like the nanas of the country uh, who don't get enough visitors and are always complaining. Stick a lot of people with coronavirus. They can take care of them. Tea and biscuits. Tea and biscuits and self isolation. Yeah, on an course. island. They're not. It's not. If you have coronavirus, you're not going to leave your house because guess what? It's fire or swim back to civilization. <laughs> yeah. So um, they'd only be able to spread it on the island, and we could just airdrop the, the food a, in. Yeah, the island is a population of about ten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the needs of the many outweighed the, them of the few. <laughs> but for, for some reason the government disagreed with us and we're in this pandemic now and um, we could have been all walking around normal we could have been like da 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 that's the reason <laughs> yeah because the government didn't lo- listen to the Shy Talk podcast show so hopefully our suggestions so in case like there's people there are a lot of people listening from other countries who might know Ireland's phase strategy so we're currently in the first phase of our phase strategy it's Basically, the government has lifted the restriction of 2k kilometer radius for exercise and they've stretched it up to 5 kilometers. So, if you maintain social distance, you are able to go up to 5 kilometers in order for the purposes of exercise. So, if, you have, if your golf course is uh, closer than 5 kilometers away, you're able to go play golf. If there's an open field that's 5 kilometers away, go to that open field, blah, 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 as long as you maintain distance. Yeah. All right, so it's all right. Like it could be better. So I decided, or we decided, the shy talk strategy for phase one should be very simple. You can go as far away from your house as 
as you like, as long as you stay in a joint inflatable plastic ball. You can't spread it. Yeah. Okay. An airtight ball, who are you going to give the coronavirus to? So, there's a woman, there was a, during the week, there was a woman in um, France or somewhere going around in one of them. Exactly. Some people are yeah. listening. Well, some people had the idea before <laughs> me, but like, <laughs> I only had this last night as I was trying to go, go to sleep. It's like, this is a great idea. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so imagine a park and people would have their dogs in a little ball. They'd be in a separate little ball with a string attached to it so it doesn't go too far away. Kids would all be in little balls and people could run into each other during a ball. It's grand. Yeah. God love yeah, anybody who's trying to go up a hill. Like, if you lived <laughs> at the top of a hill, you're, <laughs> you're probably not getting home that night. <laughs> Be fine though, because you wouldn't get wet or cold or anything in your little bubble. No, you might find it hard to breathe. But no, uh, what else I'd... also likes air? The coronavirus. Yeah, you'd, you'd be fine. So, phase two for the government is you're allowed visitors at different households uh, as long as it's no more than four and they keep a two meter distance from one another. So, yeah. I think, yeah, once again, seems seems reasonable. But it could be improved slightly. So I decided phase two is to allow people to go to other people's house, but just not at the same time. Yeah, perfect solution. Like. Perfect solution. So like you could you can go to somebody's house just as long as they're not there. <laughs> it's, it's like foolproof. Fool, realistically, how are you going to spread the coronavirus if they're not there? There's nobody there. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was reasonable enough. And you can just Skype uh, Skype call everyone from their house and go, hey, I'm in your house. And they're like, oh, my God, this is so weird. <laughs> I'm sure, in like, your house. You could, just, you could just go to their house and they can go to your house. Yeah, exactly. And you can just... uh, raid each other's cupboards. Yeah. You make, them, you make a cup of tea before you leave and leave it on the table. They make a cup of tea before they leave. You made each other a cup of tea. It's fine. Um, I don't know if that's the greatest strategy because you would have handled the tea bag. You would have mauled a tea, uh, cup of tea. You can, you can make it with uh, gloves and a mask on you. No, oh, yeah, that, that that yeah, exactly. And be lukewarm yeah. by the time you get back to your house, unless you're neighbours. Yeah, be fine. Mm. Um, yeah, phase three uh, for the government is sporting events can resume behind closed doors. Phase three for the Shy Talk podcast show is sporting events can continue as long as both contestants or none of the contestants have the coronavirus. Very simple. Yeah. You can't spread yeah. the coronavirus to someone who already has the coronavirus. So if they want to fight, let them fight. Yeah. Um, equally, you can't spread the coronavirus <laughs> if you don't have the coronavirus. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, well, that's, that's what we're hoping. That's what that's... <laughs> Maybe you don't we even. Have to, have, we haven't done any of the science behind this. Oh well, there's always a there'll be a science guy to come along anyway if if this doesn't work, and I'm pretty sure they'll point it out. <laughs> uh, phase four for uh, the government is large uh, gatherings at households. Uh, social distancing still in place. Phase four for uh, the Shy Talk Popular Show is you're allowed to go back to shifting on the dance floor. Yeah, you you might need to explain that for people that are like American and stuff. Okay, so shif- um, shifting on the dance floor is like pulling or get uh, going in for a kiss, I guess, on a dance floor. Isn't like riding, which is the having <laughs> sex. <laughs> so you, so it's the idea of it's getting another person to go back to your house for that reason. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> shifting on the dance floor. So you get going for the old schnog <laughs> riding on the dance floor is more of a stage 5 thing <laughs> yeah so stage 5 <laughs> you guessed it <laughs> as long as you maintain social distancing <laughs> all those guys in the small dick app <laughs> yeah they, they won't be allowed um <laughs> Um, yeah, so like that's that's our f- uh, phase four. Is there a shift on the dance floor so coppers can reopen and like all the shifting can happen there? Um, phase five is there are some social gatherings allowed, so uh, sporting events, I think that means, are allowed to re- resume. 
with uh, yeah. certain mental restrictions. Uh, phase five for uh, the Shy Talk Poker Show, kind of just around two counties, really, is dubs are allowed to go back to Kirklow on their holidays. <laughs> Having ice go on Kirklow Beach. <laughs> they, they are like super spreaders, though. What, dubs or Kirklow people? Yeah. Just dubs. Yeah, they probably are because it's probably the largest county that has the coronavirus because it's the largest population. Yeah. But yeah, I think the dubs missed their uh, ice cream on Kirklow Beach and their, the sand in their eyes and hair. <laughs> and then they crack. So we have to we have to let them go back to some normality. <laughs> normality. <laughs> And then they, then they can go shifting in the dance floor of the local nightclubs. Yeah, exactly. After they have their chips and their um, fizzy drinks. <laughs> Actually, a, f- a funny thing that I've noticed during uh, the lockdown mm. is that um, sales of pregnancy tests have gone up. Yeah, and uh, sales of condoms have dropped. Went yeah. through, through the floor. Um, I think the people uh, on Jurex were giving out about it. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Well, people are in their house together a lot and they're bored. Yeah, but you'd imagine like sales of condoms would go up then. They're cheaper. Well, you part. imagine that maybe they're like, oh, we'll have another kid. Or they're like, oh, I don't want to go to the shops again to buy condoms. Let's just take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> like, because in fairness, like the middle of a pandemic probably isn't the best time to go and get pregnant. I imagine if you're in a long term relationship, your girlfriend's probably on the pill and you probably don't have sex with a condom. Maybe. A lot of the times I'd say that's the case. And maybe your girlfriend just forgets to have take the pill and boom, you have a child. Yeah. And so that's no, how half funny. of Ireland's population came to bear. But but then, like, why, like, so condom sales should have remained steady then, rather than dropping. No, because, once again, the people who buy condoms are people who are trying to get the shifts in coppers. <laughs> and Maybe. there's no coppers, so there's no shifting. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like, that's just logical. <laughs> oh, what I think is we've we found out is that a lot of couples don't use condoms <laughs> during this time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that like it's well, a very Irish thing. Like, like no matter what happens in Ireland, that's. I think it, it's very Irish thing that a lot of people just don't use condoms. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. like. It's it's a very Irish thing that whenever anything negative happens in the country, there's like a population boom. <laughs> snow, <laughs> yeah, the snow <laughs> snowstorm population boom. Yeah, like foot and mouth uh, population boom. <laughs> yeah, like the the fucking the last recession, like population boom. Yeah, people are riding out themselves out of misery. Yeah, seems a great idea. I think, I think people are just like, oh, my job's fucked, so I need a definite source of income. Let's have seven kids. <laughs> I think it's like, oh, my job's <laughs> gone. I can't leave my house. It's better just ride the missus to cheer myself up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, maybe I don't know, but like, um, <laughs> I think there, there definitely will be. I think around the world there'll be probably a population boom because couples are just in their house all the time. Yeah, they kind of go to the gym. The like, but they're also least... stuck in the they're also stuck in the house with their kids. Yeah, I think maybe it's kind of the danger of it then. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, if we get caught, we have to pay for Terry. <laughs> that'll, <laughs> that'll, that'll take away for the holiday fund. <laughs> no holidays this year. Yeah, we had to send Mike to therapy. <laughs> I also, um, my mum was like talking to a physio and she said because of Zoom, They've seen a large number of people getting calling them with injuries. Yeah. Yeah, people are injuring themselves doing Zoom classes. Oh, right. And yeah. possibly yeah. internet challenges as well. 
did you see the newest TikTok challenge? What's the new TikTok challenge? I don't know if this might be this might be a shite talk challenge. Okay. Uh, so you, you stand in front of like a full length mirror, and you record yourself, and you just piss your pants. <laughs> I'm gonna let you take the 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 ball on this one. <laughs> this can be a Ken thing. <laughs> Like, I, I, like, don't I, don't, I don't know like how happy <laughs> like, why is people that who live thing? in your house will be when they are watching you clean up your own piss off the floor. Yeah, like I don't know why this is the thing. I watched like Ten, one of them. Yeah. I watched one of these videos and I was like, yeah, that's just really, really stupid. Yeah. I wonder like if they're <laughs> just trying to see how much people will actually do it. <laughs> like, it's just fucking stupid yeah. this guy just comes on he's just like tiktok piss your pants challenge and then he just pisses his pants i don't know people are yeah that seems strange yeah um <laughs> i don't know i've I've no words to that like is this what, what people are are coming to <laughs> where do you go from there <laughs> I, I don't know we should talk about um a bit boxing i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is not any ordinary boxing match and these things have come a little bit more popular uh, so we seen the PewDiePie and the other person have a boxing match that was pretty successful the fact that they didn't actually have any boxing experience and it was like an amateur match and then they end up having a pro match yeah well obviously this is kind of caught on and there are certain uh, people trying to recreate similar kind of things because Hofbor uh, Borjusen, <laughs> uh Dementon from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, he and Eddie Hall are having a bit of back and forth with one another. This is over after Borjusen, um bet Eddie Hall's deadlift record. So he deadlifted 1,104 pounds. Um, Eddie Hall's 2016 record was 1,102 uh, £1, pounds uh, back in 2016. And Eddie Hall was fairly quickly off saying that it's an absolute, it's not legitimate, it's an absolute disgrace him flaunting saying that he broke a world record because it wasn't under a world record, it wasn't under an event and there wasn't any kind of people didn't know if the weights were actually accurate to what you were lifting and it wasn't a sanctioned lift yeah so the mountain came back and called eddie hall an arrogant asshole <laughs> uh, yeah, and um uh, basically said he want, he knocked out his world record now he wants to knock out hall hall's like huh oh, sounds like fighting words so um after they are finished in scripting this bullshit story, they're both offered a seven-figure contract and the fight's going to be happening in Las Vegas. So, now, I imagine that this may be... Maybe they do have a bit of animosity to, towards one another, but I, I kind of figured that this story may, maybe just to build hype around the fight and uh, for a reasoning why this fight is going ahead. Uh, both of them are quite hotheads. Um, but the fight is going to happen in Las Vegas. They are going to be paid a seven-figure contract, and uh, it's been tilted at the world's uh, heaviest heavyweight match ever, because the mountain weighs four hundred and twenty-five pounds. Hall weighs uh, a minor three hundred and sixty-two pounds. Jesus. Yeah. So these two guys <laughs> are fairly large. Like, I, I think the UFC's heavyweight is like 200 and something pounds. Yeah, is it two, 225, 250? Yeah, two, I think it might be 225. It's the cutoff for heavyweight in the UFC. So, like, Eddie Hall's, Eddie Hall's 362, so that's a good 100 pounds larger. That's an, a, another human being, basically. Another large human being over the heavyweight d- d- divisions, Paul Johnson, is yeah. <laughs> uh, it's about four hundred and twenty-five pounds. That's n- that's pretty much near double what the heavyweight um, of the UFC. Now I think boxing may, may be a bit different, um, and they have super heavyweights as well in boxing. So, but like these guys, the boxing are- weight classes are like. A bit lighter though, aren't they? Like the boxing. There's more of them though. 
yeah, like a, a boxing, yeah, there's more of them, but like their weight classes are narrower. Yeah, yeah. So these would these would be super heavyweights or super super heavyweights. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, so like they're going they're going to have a pretty much a year to train for this fight. Uh, both guys are saying that this is going to be their sole focus is beating one another. And you know, I kind of I'm kind of into these crazy fights. These like uh, non professional boxing box matches because they're a bit of fun. There's a bit of hype behind them. the build ups always better than the actual fight itself. And as long as the card has decent fights through it, um I'm not gonna be too too unhappy because okay, the two rookies, two guys who can't box or shit are gonna get the biggest paycheck and that is a disgrace in itself. However, it gives like a lot of maybe more talented boxers that wouldn't get the limelight uh payday and then get some into the limelight like people are gonna sit down buy the pay-per-view watch the the matches pre- previous and like i don't have a huge problem with it. yeah i like i don't know sometimes it depends like i think the the logan paul thing that kind of pissed me off a bit yeah i think because they're youtubers and these guys are just like skinny little twerps who are yeah. probably really good friends deep down and they just wanted to do this for publicity and like that, yeah. and maybe Eddie Hall and Borg Johnson uh, are the same uh, but I think because they are like world record holders in weightlifting I co- and they have so much power it kind of makes that, it that much uh, more interesting because knockouts are the most exciting thing about boxing and having two incredibly strong guys swing at each other with probably pretty bad mobility and the ability to move away with shots, you're kind of <laughs> yeah. guaranteed a knockout and that's going to be interesting. Plus yeah. you have the mountain from Game of Thrones in a fight. Like, that. <laughs> like I think it's a little bit different than the other youtubers having a fight didn't he like spar with mcgregor yeah it was a kind of like i don't know if he actually threw any shots on mcgregor yeah i i, I think it was more like just a publicity stunt kind of thing. yeah no I, I think i think it was and connor only hit him in the stomach yeah, well, he could probably only reach his stomach. Yeah, well, yeah, but like, I, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't think um, he was actually swinging. It was a, actually a proper fight, but like, he, I think he might have, like, he might be. I've done a few boxing classes. Obviously, he's trying a bit, and if he wants, if he wants to fight Eddie Hall, Eddie Hall's probably looking for something else to do. Seven figures, seven figures. Like, you're not going to say no to that. And yeah, it's really interesting and. Another thing you were saying to me was Mike Tyson is looking to get back into fighting. <laughs> yeah. And that's it's a scary like, proposition because he doesn't want to fight box up-and-coming boxers. He wants to fight celebrities. Yeah, yeah like he posted... Um, i just seen like an article quickly. I mean, he posted photos where he's been in the gym like cutting weight and stuff like and getting back into fighting shape recently. And he posted photos about it. And he wants to start doing celebrity charity boxing matches. Who <laughs> in their right man, mind would be mad enough to get into the ring against Mike Tyson? Like, I, like I'm pretty sure everyone has seen that video going around of his, his him working pads with that pad man. And that pad man nearly <laughs> lost his freaking life. Like, he is the bravest man in America right now. It, it, it is that pad man because Mike Tyson is worth inches away from taking that guy's head clean off his shoulders, and yeah, he's incredibly quick and incredibly powerful. Still, I mean, he's fifty three years old. Like who? Who's going to be mad enough to say, "Yeah, I'll take that"? Who? Put him maybe, Foreman, Chuck Liddell. <laughs> Put him in against Chuck Liddell. <laughs> I don't think Chuck Liddell. No, Chuck Liddell's fucked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is first and last box match. Like you're, you're. I'd say uh, it'll end up being like another retired boxer. I'd say it'll be like George Foreman or Evander Holyfield or somebody. Lennox like that, Lewis. Say. Yeah, Lennox Lewis or. Yeah. Someone like that. KG yeah, Taylor. I, I, 
like I, I can't imagine they're going to imagine put Mike they... Tyson in against Justin Bieber or something like. That. <laughs> okay, <it's> cutie pie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's going to fight the winner of fucking Logan Paul PSI. Um, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Brock, that'd actually be good. I'd watch that. Brock Lesnar versus Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, you have like you have Brock Lesnar obviously would have the size over him and power, and youth yeah. and steroids, and Mike Tyson would have like the boxing ability and speed. Yeah, and my uh, Brock Lesnar is shit at boxing, but he, he's absolutely <laughs> useless at striking. Yeah, and he's and he's a bit of a dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, yeah, we can call him a dick. <laughs> Yeah, see I, just, I don't want him to ever know that they called him a dick. <laughs> You'll see Brock Lesnar knocking on Ken's door. What do <laughs> <Yeah>. you say? <laughs> Once he says two meters away, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep calling him a dick, I don't think he's going to say two meters away. <laughs> <laughs> he might break that social distance. <laughs> yeah. Just call the guards. Yeah, like it would be <laughs> really. It would, <laughs> It would be pretty close. Um, yeah, it would be really interesting to see what celebrity go. Yeah, I'll take that. Celebrity death match. Yeah, like, who's going to take a fight against Mike Tyson? I don't know. He's ready to go right now. Like, it'd have to be someone insane. I, I, like, I, nobody even jumps to mind that you could say, yeah, they, they'd fight Mike Tyson. Yeah, no, no, there's no, no human being that will t- take that. <laughs> like, Maybe the winner of Eddie Hall versus Born Jern Erickson. <laughs> Maybe Born Jernson or yeah, whatever he pronounces his name. Mountain, just yeah. call him Mountain. <laughs> yeah, no half tour would be probably easier. Yeah, or that. <laughs> yeah, half tour Born Jern Born Jernson. Interesting name. They do you know no uh, interesting fact about people from Iceland. Go for it. They're all related. No, we're just lost our Icelandic viewers. No, they're <laughs> they use uh, their dad's first name as their surname, so it changes every generation. That's why it's like whatever son. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's uh, yeah. That's just Hoftor's um, dad's name, and then his his son's called we call Hoftor. <laughs> Hoftor is a cool second name. Yeah. I wouldn't mind the surname Hoftor. <laughs> Mark Hoftor <laughs> has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> Is that gonna be your new name? That you're gonna change your name? No. Nah. <laughs> I'll stick with. It. I'll stick with my name. Um, yeah, but I thought, I thought that was in- interesting. Anyway, uh, in- something to look forward to in terms of like bizarre, weird fights. Um, Actually, if if anybody listening has any idea. Who the fuck would be mental enough to fight Mike Tyson? Let us know. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Or if you yourself is mental enough to fight Mike Tyson, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Like, the only people I, I, I could think of other than retired boxers are retired MMA fighters and um, retired or po- possibly current pro wrestlers who have a bit of a name. So, like, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of fighters, you have Cain Velasquez, uh, who might do it. Would be yeah. He's but he's in. He'd be close enough to his prime. You have Junior Dos Santos, uh, would be another person that he springs wines. He likes boxing. I don't know if these guys are too heavy for Mike Tyson. I think he'd probably fly in around the light heavyweight division, in terms of um, fighters. Um, Outside dark horse chance, uh, Alexander Gustafsson. Alexander Gustafsson would probably be mad enough. He'd be mad enough. He's a really good boxer. He's actually a very, very talented boxer. It would be a very, very competitive fight. and be very, very interesting for MMA fans. I don't think Alexander has a big enough of a fanship to get gather the boxing attention necessarily yeah. to create event he hasn't really won at in, in the ufc uh even though he's a t- top contender he lost to basically pretty much every, all the champions yeah so 
unfortunately, he's probably not a big enough name for a Mike Tyson, but he'd probably give him a go. Do you know who would be mad enough to fight Mike Tyson if he could get up to weight? What? Fucking Bisbee. Michael Bisbee? Yeah, I'd say he'd be mad enough to fight Mike Tyson. He probably would. Um, he has a glass chin, so... Uh, and like, a glass eye. <laughs> and a glass eye. And probably shouldn't be hitting the head anymore. If you want to keep his senses. I, I, I wouldn't like to see this thing against Mike Tyson. Yeah, I think he'd be mad enough to take it, though. Yeah, would he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would. He definitely would. Um, I think Anderson Silver would, would be like mad enough to take it as well. Tweet Bisbing and ask him. Tweet Anderson Silva. Yeah, tweet, yeah, yeah, tweet the two of them there and find out. Or even, um, not Rashad Evans, maybe, but um, what's his name? Um, Daniel Cormier. But once again, like way too competitive a fight for Mike Tyson. He's looking for like, like famous chefs, I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, he's looking to fight Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah, he looks like, like famous chefs, people who were on Love Island. Um, yeah, like maybe an actor or two. Tom Hardy, maybe. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Don't, don't, know. don't know, but like you, you'd have to be insane to take that fight if you're just like if you didn't come from a long line of backgrounds of being punched in the face repeatedly. I would probably give that one a miss because that that's the a very bad welcoming party to getting punched in the face. It's being punched in the face by Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a bad way to start. You are jumping heavily into the deep end. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go big or go to the fucking morgue. More like, oh my god, he still has it. He still has all that power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that yeah anyway speaking of really dumb things to do so a woman in america see in america they've been all advised that everyone if they're going out in public to wear a face mask and do you know what if you've have you put on a face mask mask yet during the coronavirus no they are quite annoying like they made my nose very very dry when i had to wear them um yeah. Uh, but like, and some people find breathing through them are is kind of restrictive, um, because obviously because some have filters. You know, the filter blocks well, air coming in. I suppose like there's a couple of reasons for that. Like one, obviously the average person not used to wearing them. Two, you're only supposed to wear them for like short periods of time. Yeah, so like, you're, uh, you're not supposed to go out wearing your fucking face mask for fourteen hours of the day. Yeah, exactly. But like this woman was going to the shops and decided that she was finding it a little bit difficult to breathe through the face mask. So she had an ingenious idea to cut a hole through the middle of her face mask so it, she could breathe a little bit easier. Perfect logic. Perfect logic. Like she's still wearing her face mask. She's breaking government guidelines and she can so breathe better. That's the kind of person who would fight Mike Tyson. <laughs> Girl with slit through face masks fights Mike Tyson. But on one condition, she doesn't have to wear the face mask. But only in, uh, is it phase three? And they both have to have coronavirus. <laughs> or none of them have to have coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, if, like, if Mike Tyson gets coronavirus, she, she has to get coronavirus and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> And she'll fight a 50 year old Mike Tyson. Um, but yeah, like. She, what? It's just like. Why did she cut a hole in it and then continue to wear the fucking thing? Um, she cut a hole. So the, the this come from a shop who obviously. I don't know if someone behind the counter started recording her when she came in. And the shop uh, clerk asked, asked her, like, oh, that's a nice mask. Where did you get it? And she's like. Oh, I, well, we have to wear them, as, but I was finding it a little bit hard to breed, so I caught a hole in it, and she, they're helping me breed. And he's like, oh, that's a good idea. I might do that with my one. And uh, she left. <laughs> Obviously, he was like, <laughs> under no circumstances, am I going to cut a hole in my mask? <laughs> it's just stupid. So, like, that's that's the logic that's happening around uh, part, uh, the world when it comes to, like, face masks. People are like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea. I wear a face mask, but it's going to put a few holes in there to help me breathe. 
Yeah. People are doing stupid stuff. Like, I, I see people going around wearing face If wearing a face mask is something that you're going to do, fair enough, right? It's it's your own decision. Do it if you want to. Um, but people wearing face masks wrong is something that's irritating me lately. Well, you know, like... A lot, lot of doctors get face masks measured for their their face, and even if like under these times where they can't get them specially made for their face, um, they're trained. Whereas the average person isn't, and like the average person thinks they're protecting themselves when they're wearing face masks. When they really should be thinking about when you wear a face mask, you're protecting other people. So it really, yeah. in order, order like for face masks to actually be effective, it needs for the whole entire community to take on board face masks. And even at that, like it's still not hundred percent protective of it. Like there, you still can catch the coronavirus even if everyone's wearing a face mask. You like social distancing is far more important. Like the two most common things I see at the minute with people wearing face masks is one. Obviously, people are struggling to breathe with them, so they either they either have the face mask on and pulled down to like their neck, and then they pull it up when they're going into the shop, then they pull it back down again, uh, or they come in and they've got it like that. It's just covering their mouth, but their nose is out. I've never seen that before, but that that's yeah. that's interesting enough. Yeah, just covering their mouth and their nose is out, like it's just stupidness. That that's just as bad as um cutting a hole in it so you can breathe better. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you have a story about kid a Lamborghini and the police. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this uh, a cop in I can't remember what state it was somewhere in America. A uh, cop was driving down the the highway, and he noticed this car was it was a seventy mile an hour speed limit. This car was doing about 32 miles an hour and it was swerving across traffic and not using the indicators. So the cop got kind of concerned that maybe the driver was having some sort of a heart attack or something. So he put on his lights and he pulled the car over. So the car stopped. And when he got up to the car, um, it was being driven by a five-year-old. Five-year-old? <laughs> yeah. So there was a five-year-old driving the car and the cop was obviously like, you know, what the fuck is going on here? So he said to the kid, like, you know, what what's happening or whatever. And it turned out that he'd been nagging his mother. His favorite car is that Lamborghini. So he'd been nagging his mother to buy him a Lamborghini. And uh, obviously she kept saying no. So when he got the chance, so his both his parents were at work. And he's been babysat by his older brother, who obviously wasn't paying too much attention to him. He got the car keys, he went out, he started the car, and he decided he was going to drive to California to buy himself a Lambo. But yeah. he only he only brought three dollars with him. <laughs> uh, like how far away from his house did he get in the car? He must have got fairly far, like, like if he got onto a highway like Like that that takes like a certain amount of ability to drive to drive onto a motorway without smashing into a load of things like in your way. Yeah. And like the cop said like he was sitting he was sitting properly at the edge of the seat like so that he could reach the pedals. Now it was an automatic car like so you wouldn't have to change gears and stuff. Yeah, but you still have the, to slow down. Yeah. Brake. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, if I like I just like if I was five, even in an automatic car and I was like, all right, I'm just going to take this to the local shops. Like, there's going to be, like, curbs being clipped, like, pedestrians being yeah. ran over. There's going to be, like, <laughs> like, there's going to be a lot of traffic on a motorway. First of all, to merge onto a motorway, where, like, looking over your blind spot, like, checking your mirrors. Like, even to get the car out of, like, the, out of the yard in the house. Yeah, that's the other thing. It was like he'd have to stick it into reverse unless the car was like a on the driveway itself. Like, I just I don't know. It's just mad. Like, like he, he would have had to navigate. I'm assuming he would have had to leave like some sort of a residential area. So he probably had to leave like 
you know, follow traffic lights or traffic signs, and then he he had to know what direction he wanted to go in. Yeah, then he doesn't know where. Like, was he was he even going in the right direction? They didn't say whether he was going the right direction or not, but he was. That's where he wanted to go. Was California. <laughs> Um, but, but like even to have like the smarts to know that okay, I'm like I don't know where he was, so I'm here and I want to go to California, so I need to take the highway. Yeah. <laughs> like, unless it was like a frequent journey that like he he would have been on. Obviously, he'd seen the like Lamborghini dealership like in the car, and he's like, "Ooh, look, that's my favorite car. I want to go in there to buy a car." And I said, "It's a shit car my parents are driving." <laughs> it was like his his logic behind wanting to go to California to get the Lamborghini because like the the cop is like, you know, you can get Lamborghinis like in other places. His logic behind California was California is where it's it's sunny and there's a lot of money, so that's where Lamborghinis come from. All right. <laughs> so he didn't put too much thought into it. Well, he is five, and <laughs> <laughs> like, I just I don't know how like a five year old could like m- m- navigate a car that far and pull up, even know to stop when guards or or cops are trying to pull you over. Yeah, like, like I don't know what like it's just fucking mad. Yeah, what also is mad is our next story because Nicolas Cage is going to be in his first ever TV series. <laughs> yeah. These segues are flying today, by the way. <laughs> uh, so Nicolas Cage is going to appear in his first eight-part uh, TV show on Netflix. Uh, it's been uh, created by CBS, um, or at least it's part funded by CBS, and it's going to see Nicolas Cage uh, play the part of Joe Exotic. Isn't that like the best casting decision ever? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is the best casting ever. Yeah, no, like, you uh, can't get any better. And I know people like give like, Nicolas Cage a lot of shit about his, his acting. Yeah. I think, on a whole, he's had, he had, he's had some awful movies. But as a whole, he's, he is a pretty good actor. Doesn't he have an Oscar? He probably does. Yeah, I think he does. <laughs> like, like he, he's possibly the worst actor to have ever won an award. Yeah, maybe yeah, won, 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 won an Oscar anyway. But like, I yeah. think, I think he's definitely under underrated in terms of uh, like, okay. Like like I said, he's been in some fucking awful movies. He's been in Ghost Rider, which is just a pile of crap. I didn't mind Ghost Rider. Um, Gone in sixty seconds is a pretty good film, and Con Gone Air. Sixty seconds is pretty good. Uh, Con, Con Air was good. Yeah. Um, the Rock. I like The Rock. Was he in that movie California? Yeah, or something like that. He's in some movie. Off. Some movie like Face that. Off. Face Off is a good movie. Yeah, exactly. He's been in some all right movies, but in terms of playing comedy, I think he'll do this character to justice. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, what the Wonder, what? Will he out Joe Exotic? Joe Exotic. Well, he kind of maybe hope so. <laughs> uh, so, like, basically, it's gonna follow um, your man Joe into his kind of turn as the Joe Exotic character, how he, how he came from being a, an ordinary man, if he ever was an ordinary man, to Joe Exotic. And he was, he was a police chief. He was a cop. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. He was chief of, chief of police in some city in Texas, I think. All right. So... <laughs> And it's going to go also through all of his enemies, so it's going to be Carl Baskin. <laughs> there has to be, doesn't there? There can't be a Joe Exotic without a Carl Baskin. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I think that's that's quite funny as well. Uh, so he's going to have a lot of enemies. So it's going to be really good. I wonder who's going to play Carl Baskin. But it's uh, from the creators, or at least he's going to have uh, some part to play in it, of... The um, the American Vandal t- show. Have you seen that? 
Oh, I seen the first series. Yeah, the first series is good. The second series is pretty good as well. I kind of stopped watching the second series after a couple of episodes because I didn't like it. Yeah, Dan Langa, Langa is is the guy behind American Vandal, and yeah, he will he'll be on board as well. I liked American Vandal. I actually, it uh, by the end of it, I didn't know if it was like a fake documentary or a real documentary. <laughs> yeah. And then I said to the a guy in training, he goes, "What the fuck, are you on with? That's that's clearly fake." <laughs> and I was like a teacher admitted fancying a kid on on on, uh, on camera <laughs> he'd be in jail <laughs> I was like yeah yeah I was kind of wondering about that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> after that that newly knowledge of American Vandal one, American Vandal two was even funnier. I actually liked it. It was a bit more out there, a bit weirder, a bit kind of st- stretching the lines of like of fiction. But I thought it was pretty good. Still, so I liked it. Yeah, like, I think the first one was better because they were kind of trying to make people have that conversation as to whether it was real or fake. Yeah, exactly. They they put it on the borderline, but they made it extremely funny as well. Like of the scenes. Am I gonna make yeah, a camera wait. that I think uh, a student is hot? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then it came up he lost his job a few episodes later. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, this is this is a so well kind of played as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like this, ran over like a few episodes. It was it was good. It was like made you laugh. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Back to Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Joe Exotic. Um, I think the uh, cast and crew that are going to be involved in this, I think this could be really good because American Vandal director uh, Sam Langa kind of can do these fake folk documentaries pretty well already and if this is going to be kind of the idea of Joe Exotic that it's just going to be like a documentary series but just fake like this and Nicolas Cage played them I think yeah. it could be good I've, I haven't seen the full Tiger King yet uh, Mark watch Tiger King I started it before you and then you finished it and now have the haircut to prove no 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 uh, I fixed my hair <laughs> oh did you yeah, I fixed it. But at the time, we should have actually got a picture of it. Ken was going around like Joe Exotic. <laughs> he had the exact same hair. It was amazing. <laughs> it's it's fixed now. Oh, no, right. no, it's a, on, on the last Zoom thing. It's fixed. And now it does tell you tied it up. Yeah, no, it's fixed. All it's right. back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's... Um, that was another one of our, our kind of we've kind of a movie section now we're kind of moving in, into our movie section and one thing <laughs> i know a lot of maybe uh people kids and adults alike will be kind of um happy to know there's gonna be a matilda re- reboot and you have the details of this one yeah so like netflix are making obviously a reboot of matilda there um there's i never knew matilda apparently is a musical did you know that? Um, no, I actually didn't. Yeah. I know the movie so that part- came out years ago wasn't uh, wasn't definitely not a mu- musical. Yeah, well, apparently it's been made into a musical since then. So the guy who um, directed the musical on like Broadway or whatever is going to direct the Netflix movie. Now, I don't know if the movie is going to be a musical, but um, traditionally... The character of Miss Trunchbull apparently is was played by a man. All right. So like the whatever the movie when we were kids with uh, Miss Trunchbull and stuff where she's a woman. Apparently that was the first time and the only time anybody has ever played Miss Trunchbull that they've actually been female. Uh, so the, in this reboot, Ralph Fiennes, I think the guy who played Voldemort. He's going to be uh, Miss Trunchbull. Yeah, see, like, I I don't know if, like, our generation is going to be ready for a different... If you like replacing the lead actor of Harry Potter, like, if you yeah. like so, someone else come along and going, going to be play Harry Potter. Um, so, like, I think everyone has such a strong idea of, like, what Matilda looks like or who she is as a kid. And the other characters, 
in the in the, the family and all that it this can only end up as a as a really bad reboot. Like I wonder will they bring in like you know like sometimes when they reboot stuff they bring in the former actors for like cameos. Yeah. Like wonder will they will they bring in like the girl that played Matilda or Oh like she could Danny be the Vito. she could be the teacher. Yeah, she could be the teacher and then Danny DeVito could have some sort of a role in it. I, I think like you could probably do a kind of like a continuation as if like Matilda is the teacher and there's another girl with her abilities that come, come, comes into the kind of class and she recognizes yeah. it. And she comes from a very similar household. Uh, so she sees this and she kind of gets flashbacks of what her childhood was like and that would be a better way of doing it. Yeah. Rather than yeah. rebooting a shit film. Or uh, rebooting it. It was like... <laughs> I, 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 don't, I really don't think you can replace her as Matilda. Like, I know even even kids today like are still sat down and watch that film. I know, I know kids that watch that film like they'll watch it like on repeat. So it isn't like it's for a new generation because I'm pretty sure the new generation has seen Matilda, or probably the large majority of kids have seen Matilda. So even they would be like, that's not that's not Matilda. Like the the whole reboot thing and remake thing kind of annoys me a little bit as well yeah like, there's no there's very few original ideas being made anymore oh Everybody, yeah, yeah. Like, wants to play it safe like movie you know like uh, companies like don't want to take the risk that nobody's going to go to the cinema to watch the fucking movie so let's remake something that was really really popular 30 years ago yeah they're trying and to play on nostalgia movie, really yeah like they're afraid to take that risk on original content. Yeah, no, there, there has been definitely a huge drain on original movies and ideas. Like I, th- I think the ideas are still there. I just think there's no like people, production companies are afraid to take the risk because it's going to just get leaked onto the internet. Everybody's going to watch it for free anyway. Why bother making something that's not going to generate any money? Yeah, that that's true. But like, then you get like c- kind of classics that come or new movies that like that come along that are original that explode. You do get them every now and again, but they're in a wash of like reboots. Yeah, like nearly everything's a fucking reboot. Yeah, there's be there's be very few like movies that came along in the last few years that are instant classics and that like or like it's such an original movie. Everyone was like, whoa. We haven't seen this before. Yeah, I don't know. Have you been watching Gangs of London? Um, no, but everyone's talking about. It. Might have to show my list. Watch, watch Gangs of London. Like it's, it's super violent, but it's like the violence is, it's kind of very real. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't do that kind of over the top. Like oh, right, okay. There, there is like over the top violence. Like it's way too violent for what would probably actually happen but when somebody gets shot like it's not like quentin tarantino fucking 16 gallons of blood like it's yeah. it's fairly real that way like there's some good fight scenes like with there's a a lot of judo and jiu-jitsu techniques in the fight scenes like it's it's pretty good oh cool you're you're off, you're actually seeing a lot of judo or jiu-jitsu being worked into movies lately yeah, I think that's because... Actually, I, I, this is where I have a little conspiracy theory. <laughs> so, you know the way the group of celebrities or whatever the fuck they are bought into UFC? Yeah. So, like, a lot of them are, like, from the entertainment business. So, like, I think the popularity of UFC, they've started to kind of showcase more stuff that you would see in UFC, in fight scenes, in movies. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. You'll see. Because I think, it, like, the obviously, lots of stuff that they do are still over the top and maybe ne- not necessarily entrances to moves that would work. But, like, you, oh, might, yeah. you, might, you might see, like, James Wan jump and spin a guy around and have him in a triangle and then break his arm and then he's dead. Yeah. Uh, whereas like that's not realistically of like how a triangle would be set up or done, but it's a triangle. So like people who know Jiu Jitsu or MA go, oh, 
cool triangle and then people uh, who don't know our martial art illiterate would be like oh cool yeah. move yeah so i think that's that, that's what it kind of like people who are a fan of the sport will appreciate seeing uh inverted camera legit technique and um people who aren't just got to see a flash of something that looked pretty cool but yeah I, I think there's rumors of netflix doing a documentary about jiu-jitsu which would be cool yeah, if it did they've been doing this for a while like i seen it on um one of those jiu-jitsu facebook pages ages ago yeah but on, um, i haven't heard that in since jiu-jitsu yeah like Netflix do good documentaries, and like I'm not, I wouldn't have been a huge fan of CrossFit, but like any of their CrossFit ones, I watch. Same with bodybuilding, any bodybuilding documentaries that they put on, um, I tend to do watch, and even oh, basketball. What? Like I've, <laughs> I watch a basketball documentary. Apparently, I'm a huge fan of basketball. <laughs> what about yoga? Uh, no, I wouldn't watch a yoga documentary. Fuck that. <laughs> Not that bored. <laughs> Fucking yoga. Mark loves yoga. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Mad for it. That and meditation. Meditation. Because guaranteed, it would be some fucking guy with long hair in some fucking fake Indian top standing in the field with wind blowing in his hair talking about fucking the, the energy around the earth and universe and be like fuck off next <laughs> I want to see the steroid, steroid guy lift something heavy and pull back down exactly where he found it <laughs> not going to try yoga then no 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 I, they, I have had tried yoga right and do you know what it was grand. It was f- fine. It was a little bit long. It went dra- dragged on a little bit too long. I think if it was like if the whole thing was an hour long, it would have been fine. Because I felt like half halfway through, I was really bored, and I was like, "All right, I'm actually kind of done with this now." Uh, but obviously, the class was like halfway through, uh, halfway through the practice, so I wasn't as uh, like I had to see it through. And then the meditation part, which I thought was nice. The meditation part was actually nice, but if it was like all over within an hour, I think it was like an hour, half to two hours. I was like, it was a little bit too long. Could yeah. cut the yoga part to like a half hour, forty minutes. The meditation part to twenty <laughs> minutes. You're grand. You, you have a good, you have a class, but like this is a little <laughs> bit long. This one waits. That's what I say. Give some weights. Yeah, get those gains. Get the what, what was the one you were always doing? Bench press. No, oh yeah, <laughs> no, I was <laughs> never doing bench press. There's a certain other person that always did bench press. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Again. We will we'll mention them. <laughs> Cause problems. A very, very certain other person that only ever did bench press. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I thought you used the bench press. I did, but like I mixed it around with uh, other exercises. So I bench pressed, I squat, I deadlift, so I do pull ups, do other exercises. But there's a certain person oh. that used to go to our gym that would only ever do bench press, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> and uh, you pointed that out. I pointed out him. <laughs> That's like. Do you realise you only ever do bench press? <laughs> like, ever. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't too happy about it. And, no, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't go down too well. Went down like a lead balloon, to be honest. But, um... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> uh, we've reached our hour of our show. <laughs> uh, so, on that bombshell. Yeah, on, on, that, on that bombshell. Um, so, yeah, just remember to lift weights, don't do yoga, and... Uh, wait for that Netflix documentary about you two, I guess, is there a run of finisher? <laughs> and if you want to fight Mike Tyson, let us know. Yeah, let us know. We'll put you in contact. Um, yeah, until next Thursday, uh, make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and watch for notifications on our social media about shows. Um, our latest, our previous latest episode is up on iTunes now. 
episode 139 of the Shy Block podcast show. It takes a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to see what the problem is. We're still working with Apple. Anytime I give a bit about them on Twitter, the problem seems to be resolved. So I'll just keep giving a bit about them on Twitter and hopefully... We get uh, we get on the same day of every other podcast, like it is on every other podcast network, um, as well. So, uh, cool. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until next Thursday, like, subscribe, and follow us on all social medias. Uh, make sure if you are in podcast places that rate podcasts like iTunes, uh, make sure that you give it a one and five star review or whatever you think is just, and because uh, it helps with people find us as well yeah, give us give us a, a review once it's five stars yeah once if you put two stars you may feck off <laughs> feck off jesus mark you've been very nice <laughs> <laughs> we'd send tyson after you yeah two stars <laughs> yeah. we'll find you <laughs> uh anyway we'll be back next thursday with another show talk to you then good luck Shut up and sit down.